Hi guys, welcome to SoundBlab. Uh, I have two amplifier models here today. Uh, they are both uh, TPA3116 uh, amplifier models. And uh, they both put out uh, 2 times 50 watts in two channels and uh, 100 watts in one channel. Uh, and I believe that is at about uh, 4 ohms for each channel. Now, I've used this particular one in quite a few of my builds and uh, I quite like it. Um, it's a really good quality board and uh, it hasn't given me any problems uh, thus far. Uh, this particular one I also bought because I wanted to compare the two and see which one is actually better. Um, now I haven't used this one in a project but I've connected it up to uh, some drivers and a power supply just to see uh, what the quality is like. Now looking at the board itself, um, it's the quality is okay, it's not that great so when you compare it to this one, uh, this one just seems to be a much better design, uh, the quality of the board and the components seems to be much better. Uh, but apart from that, um, I, uh, I, it has these three controls here in the front and I must be honest with you, I don't really know what all of them do. Uh, even with the manufacturer's uh, um, specifications uh, it doesn't really <laughs> exactly tell you what they do uh, this one I know is quite simple this control this is the master volume control so that's that's uh, uh, ups or downs the volume of the entire system uh, this particular one uh, adjusts I think um, treble uh, and this one the bass but there's no cross crossover frequency that I can actually set here um, and after having connected it up, I must be honest with you, uh, these settings don't make any sense to me. So I don't know if there's someone out there that knows how this actually works, please uh, let me know down in the comments. Um, anyway, so uh, something else I also noticed with this particular board is uh, it's got a very slight background hiss. Okay, now um, you can actually hear it from a slight distance away, um, you know, but it's not, it's, not, it's not the case where you put your ear up against a speaker and you can actually hear it. You can actually hear this away from about one meter away. So it's uh, a little bit of an annoying hiss that you can hear. So uh, I don't know if there is a fix for an amplifier like this. I don't know. Uh, I'm not an electronic engineer. Uh, I don't know that much about these things. But uh, um, I do know that it's got a hiss on it and um, it's yeah so th this board is, is is really something that i'm not going to use in a project and i wouldn't recommend this for anyone to use okay so i'm going to put this one aside and we're going to concentrate on this one i'm going to go through some of the features for you uh, and then i'm also going to show you how to actually connect this up Um, so like I said, this board is a very good quality. Um, it uh, gives out uh, 2 times 50 watts in two channels and uh, 100 watts in one channel. Um, now, the controls that it gives you uh, is quite good because it has a master volume control. Uh, this controls the level of your treble. Um, this controls uh, the crossover frequency between your full range drivers or your two channels and your 0.1 channel of the subwoofer. Uh, and this sets the the subwoofer level, the base level. Uh, now the crossover frequency uh, ranges from 180 to 250 uh, hertz, um, and that is really um, good enough. You know, when you consider that uh, most full range drivers in a sealed enclosure is not going to really perform uh, that well under, let's say, 100 and 100 to 150 hertz. Uh, this actually provides you with uh, um, a very good range that you can work in. Okay, now um, some of the connections apart from the Bluetooth chip that is on here, okay, um, you have a, a auxiliary input. Now unfortunately this board didn't come with a connector um, like this for instance, okay. Um, I actually salvaged this from uh, another amplifier board uh, which doesn't work anymore um, but if you don't have that you actually have to either make up that this connection yourself or buy it somewhere um, loose or on its own um, or you can underneath the board you can actually just solder your um, your wires to that and that would lead to a 3.5 millimeter input jack 
Um, what you all, what you do get with the board though is you get an LED um, that actually plugs into uh, this connector over here. Um, I have that installed somewhere, so I don't have it with me now. Uh, I found that the Bluetooth uh, reception is quite good. Okay, um, I haven't tested the distance that it will go, uh, but it will quite easily um, won't drop any connections, or uh, you know, it'll quite give you a, a distance between five and ten meters, you know, as you would normally go around in your house or in a in a room with no problems. Okay, so this board uses a 24 volt uh, input. Okay, now uh, you can connect a, a, a DC input to this, but it does have a manufacturer specifies a, a specific way in which you would actually connect that up. And I will show you that shortly. Now, I have found that this particular board uh, doesn't actually work under 22 volts. So it's not like uh, this particular one, which is a little bit more flexible in terms of its uh, output voltage or input voltage, uh, which is between 12 and 25 volts. Um, and I've tested it with 12 volts, it does work. Uh, this one, on the other hand, doesn't. Um, you could say that a negative of that is that uh, you can't limit uh, the output, the power output of the board, uh, but you can quite easily just do that at volume control. Okay, so uh, this this power supply over here is a 24 volt 5 amp power supply. The manufacturer specifies uh, for this board it specifies a uh, minimum of four and a half amps, five amps uh, for this board, but uh, I never use this board to its full capacity or full uh, output capacity capability. Uh, so um, five amps I have found is more than enough, more, more than enough for me. All right, so um, just give me a moment, I'll set this up a little bit. Um, and uh, I'll show you how we actually connect this board up to the power supply. Okay, now on the power supply here, you have um, your main input. So you have live, neutral, and ground. Okay, so you want to prepare your wires that's going to come from your main socket. Um, so I've just gone with the normal color wires that you will generally get. You have brown for live, blue for neutral, and green yellow for ground. So let's quickly uh, attach these. You don't want to over tighten the screws you just want to uh, make sure that it's uh, nice and tight like that right now in order to connect up your uh, amplifier board uh, we have these three inputs here middle is ground and they've marked the two outside ones as uh, VCC or the positive voltage in uh, now the way they actually connect this up is um, by taking uh, okay so we're going to take our positive wire, which is the red one, and our ground, which is the black one. Okay, and that's going to go in here. Additionally, what you also want to do is they want you to bridge uh, VCC and VCC. Now, as I said before, I'm not an electric engineer, so I have no idea why you would do that or how that works. But it does work, trust me. Okay, so we're going to connect, just secure that. And the other one's going to go on that side. And then ground goes in the middle. Right, so that's how you connect with the amplifier there. Uh, so connecting that to your power supply, uh, you'll see uh, normally your power supply would have a 
V plus and a V minus, okay? So these two are exactly the same, they're connected together, and so are those. Uh, so all we have to do is take our uh, black wire, which is ground or negative, and connect it to one of the two terminals. And red goes to one of the negative, one of the positive terminals, sorry. And that's how I do that. It's quite simple, very, very easy. Now connecting up the loudspeakers uh, is also quite a straightforward affair. Um, I've got the subwoofer here. I'm just going to quickly show you how I connected it up. Uh, on the driver you have a uh, positive and a, a negative uh, connection. Uh, so once you've made that on the driver, you will see on the amplifier model itself it says base. Uh, and you have the negative on the left side and the positive on the right side. Uh, so my cable is uh, um, coded here with a line on the <coughs> on, on, on the one side and I've selected to use that as the positive. And negative goes in here. Now the full range drivers work in exactly the same way. Um, you have a positive and a negative connected in the same way to your full range driver. Um, and then here you will see it says right and left. So just make sure that your right channel is connected uh, to the right connector and your left channel is connected to your left connector. And that's it. That's how you connect up all your drivers. Um, I'll quickly go over the controls again for you uh, and uh, just show you how I would normally go about setting this up. Right, so as I've explained before, uh, we have these four controls here in the front. Uh, this one controls your master volume, okay? So uh, what I normally do is, uh, because very often the drivers that I use are not um, powerful enough for the output of the amplifier, uh, I would actually mount my board inside the cabinet. Now a lot of people have asked, uh, you know, how do you then control all of these settings? Uh, well, it's really not necessary to control all of these settings. You can preset all of these, mount the amplifier module inside the cabinet and then use the Bluetooth on your phone uh, to then actually control the volume as you're playing back the music. Um, so in order to protect my drivers, I would set, uh, I would preset my volume control. Um, and so it, it depends on, you know, when you actually start hearing distortion out of your speakers. So I would normally turn it up until uh, I can hear my speakers are starting to struggle and then I'll turn it slightly back again. Um, for the treble, uh, sometimes you can get uh, full range drivers that maybe sound a little bit sharp in the high end uh, and you want to just turn the treble down. Um, this essentially uh, adjusts the level of the treble so that the level between your your uh, uh, bass frequencies or your, your bass or subwoofer channel and your uh, full range channels are level so that you can get a nice flat frequency response. Um, this is also something that I set by ear uh, and you have to do this according to your preference. Uh, this dial 
uh, adjusts the crossover frequency. So the range here is, as said before, 180 to 250 hertz. Uh, now this is also something that you have to tune by ear. Uh, you can of course uh, take measurements if you have the capability to do that and then actually determine the ideal crossover frequency point. Um, I normally uh, start somewhere in the middle and then I'll go a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right uh, uh, until you know it seems good to me. Uh, this sets the level of, of the bass. Uh, so if the system sounds a little bit bass heavy, uh, you can turn this down uh, and then maybe just turn it slightly up again until uh, you can hear that the uh, you get a nice flat frequency response between your your bass driver and your full range drivers. So that's really it guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions that you want to make, uh, please uh, down, down in the comment section. Um, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions um, and I hope that this video was uh, helpful to you. I'll put links in the description to both of these amplifier modules as well as to a suitable power supply that you can use with either one of these. Uh, the links are eBay links, that's where I purchased my amplifiers. Uh, thank you guys uh, very much for watching and remember to, to subscribe and like this video.